Hi everyone, this is Konzel here, and I finally am resuming the Nilo Math series. Uh, but anyway, the Nilo Math series is really near to its end already. And this time around, I have for you guys a weapon comparison. And I'll talk about uh, some of the important stuff to take you know, off uh, a little bit on PJC, because I think it deserves a closer look, at least in terms of artifact comparison. And then we'll look into the weapon comparison itself, and I'll show you guys what the weapons that we'll talk about here. So let's dive straight in. All of the weapon comparisons will be done based on the com, rotation, ER, stats, assumptions, etc. All done in Nilo Math Guide 4, i.e. Nilo of Field. So why am I doing Nilo of Field instead of Nilo on Field? We have already seen from the previous Math Guides that Nilo on Field is always worse than Nilo of Field for a Bountiful Core Com. Because Bountiful Calls are her main source of damage and of Field does provide you a high energy number of uh, Hydro Triggers and Body Full Calls. So I'm only going to compare for the better comp, which is the Nilo of Fuel. I'm sorry if you if you're interested in using Nilo as on Fuel. I really don't recommend it, to be honest. But if you think it's fun, you like seeing her attacks, you know, you do you. But for my math wise, I'm going to focus on Nilo of Fuel. So before I go into the actual weapon comparison, I just want to quickly show PJC. Because PJC is a traditional uh, crit DPS weapon. So I thought it's fair if I at least show uh, how it looks like on the crit DPS builds. So these are the figures. Now, it's been some time since I last did the needle figure, right? And it doesn't look bad, right? I mean, at 2 plus enemies, at C2, you get like what, 1.41 million? At C2, with one enemy, you get 731k. But if you have somehow remember the uh, signature weapon figures, you'll know that it's uh, quite a fair bit higher than this. But before I talk about the weapon comparison, I just want to say that even with PJC that helps with your traditional crit DPS build, okay, this permutation here, HP, HP with EM is still better. Now, to be fair, let's look at it against one enemy, right? Because against two enemies, for sure, this will be better. But even against one enemy, it's still worse off. Right, since 0 R1, there's still a whole 100k which is almost like what, 20% behind. And this is almost 20% behind, it's about 21-22% behind. Okay, so yes. I can tell you the main reason is obviously her main source of damage is still bountiful cost, not her talent damage. And this doesn't change even if you go on fuel because when, you, when you're using a Nilo on fuel, bountiful costs are still her main source of damage. Unless you want to do like a minish build, uh, you are doing her in forward vapes. I mean, it's feasible, but I assure you, it's not going to be the best uh, damage that she can offer. Okay, it's not her most optimal comp. So this is for PJC, and it's only for PJC. I'll take a closer look in terms of the artifact comparison. But for the rest of the weapons, I will not do artifact comparison in the interest of time. That's number one. Number two is also because. Uh, PJC is a weapon that's uh, more beneficial towards traditional crit DPS, so I wanted to show you guys that triple HP with EM is still better for body full cost com, even with PJC, even for PJC, better than the crit build. Uh, let's go straight into the weapon comparison now. I think that's the one that most folks are interested in. And bam, here you go. Uh, I know it's a lot of figures at one go, but don't worry, I will pause and show the figures later. So in terms of weapon comparison, we are doing her signature weapon, obviously. P of uh, Kaishnisut, I don't know whether I'm pronouncing that correctly. Then we have PJC, we have Siphos or Ziphos. No matter it's Siphos or Ziphos. Doesn't matter. Anyway, Ziphos, and then you have Iron Sting and Sacrificial Sword. Okay. I'll talk more about each weapon uh, when you go to the individual section. But the interesting thing, if you are, if you are shot eye enough, right, you should notice that PJC is in a very bad position because even against the four star weapons, it's worse. Right? Even against the four star weapons, it's worse. Uh, I'll talk about this, and you, I, for for completeness' sake, I've included the one enemy and two enemies. Although I can tell you, the main difference is really just the gap being slightly bigger. Uh, for a existing gap, for any existing gap, the gaps get bigger when it's against two enemies. Simple as that. But if you look at the C two 
R5 or even the C2R figures, they are looking at you very good DPS wise. Okay, against two enemies, obviously, because that's the max potential for body pull cores. Now, before I go further into each of the weapons, let's just quickly go through the important notes. First off, ER values matches whatever has been covered in previous map guides. So it's 156 to 216 ER before C4 and 120 ER C4 plus. Obviously, if you're using a weapon that gives you more ER than that, then that is your minimum ER. Alright. Now, H triple H3 with EM build is compared here because that's the best artifact permutation for Nilo Multiple Cost Comp, even across all the different weapons. Now, in terms of artifact substats, I'm assuming 5 base flat HP rows and 20% HP each on your flower and feather, i.e. you get enough up you get three upgrades of HP onto your base HP percentage row on your flower and your feather each. Instead of the max possible 30%. Because we all know it's not that easy, right? Although I actually do have one piece. <laughs> but it's not that easy to get 30% each. Okay. So for my math in terms of uh, making it more realistic, I have to configure it as 20% each. 30% each is still doable, okay? It's doable. And for the Nilo off your body full core comp here, the figures that I use here is actually DMC Kole, it's without Nahida. I've already done the math for Nahida with Nilo, so that's looking really good. But I can tell you, I'm doing, I'm not doing Nahida here because after all, Nahida does come after Nilo. We will be using Nilo first before Nahida, so I think it's better for me to compare DMC Kole first. And anyway, in terms of weapon comparison, I wouldn't expect much of a difference between the Nahida Nilo and the DMC Kole Nilo. Yeah, I don't really expect much of a difference. Okay, let's slight typo here. And of course, R1 or 5 star weapons will be compared against both R1 and R5 of 3 star and 4 star weapons. If there's any 3 star weapon, not that there's any in this uh, video. Okay, but this is just to be fair, right? I mean, I can't compare 5 star of R5, R5 or 5 star weapons because those are extremely costly in comparison to the rest. Alright, now let's go into the specific section itself. I have one each for the each of the new weapons that are being compared here. Signature weapon, I don't need to talk about it because it's been talked to... It's been over-analyzed at this point in time. <laughs> By this time, it's already over-analyzed with regards to the on-field comm, the off-field comm, the Nahida Nilo comm, etc. So let's look at PJC. The thing about swords for Nahida is that PJC is the only other sword that provides H3 percentage other than her signature weapon. But it's only 20% at R1 and 40% at R5. And to be honest with you guys, it really doesn't contribute much else for body full core. The high CR doesn't really help when majority of Nilo's damage is actually bountiful cost. Likewise, for the attack bonus skilling of HP, that's completely useless, useless as well since Nilo skills off of the HP. So in, in, in a way, right, if you think about it, right, PJC's attack bonus and high crit rate are all useless for Nilo. Next to useless, at least for the high CR. So it, it doesn't feel good to use PJC just for that 20% HP at R1 and the 40% R5. In fact, if you remember what I mentioned, there were a lot of red uh, shades, right? For red figures, for the red shades for the PJC. And that's because PJC is really the worst weapon in this comparison. I would definitely recommend you to use PJC on other characters who can actually make use of all three bonuses from PJC instead of just HP percentage. Okay, and PJC is a good weapon. PJC traditionally has always been a good weapon. Typically, it's only a little far, a little lower than the. It's usually less than one tier lower than the signature weapon for new characters, new sword characters. So, PJC is actually a pretty good weapon to get, and it's good that it is also on the same banner as uh, her signature weapon. But I think I'll talk more about that in the next video, yeah? So, to be fair, PJC does give you slightly more HP than the other 4-star weapons, right? So that's good for increasing the body focal damage triggered by other hydro characters in the team. But it's still not worth the slight EM drop on them when PJC can be better, much better utilized on other characters. Like even giving PJC to a C6 in Chu is much much better. Okay. Now HP wise, yes, it's slightly more than the other 4-star weapons and I'll show you guys what is the uh, HP for the 4-star weapons later. But uh, effectively, it's 64k and 67k at R5 for PJC. Uh, 
yeah, I really don't recommend using PGC on her. It's really better utilized on other characters. Now, next, Siphos. This is the new 4 star Gachon weapon. It's the sword that uh, El Haitam is using in all the stories so far. Although I can tell you guys, it will not be his BIS when his signature weapon comes out. But it's actually the next best option after her signature weapon because it gives you two out of three stats that Nilo requires. Nilo requires HP, ER, and EM. This Sifo's weapon gives you ER and EM, so just two, two out of three. Just like her signature weapon, right? Her signature weapon gives you HP and EM. But obviously, the signature weapon gives you the most important stat, which is HP and a whole lot of it. But with Sifo's also giving you two stats out of three. Or Cyphos, I really don't know. I think if it's X, I should be Cyphos, right? If it's X, Y, then it's Cyphos. So Cyphos does allow you more room for upgrades into EM slash flat HP. Because of the fact that it's giving you two stats from one weapon. And in terms of HP, it's 61k. With the notes I mentioned earlier, which is uh, the 5 base flat HP rolls and 20% HP each on Flower and Feather. Technically speaking, you can go higher HP with Cyphos. Because you can get flat HP upgrades instead of EM if you really want to. Or I should put it this way, it's not the end of the world if you get EM upgrades or flat HP upgrades. Both are feasible. Okay? I wouldn't I wouldn't go farm again just because I have an artifact that gives me, I don't know, 1k flat HP versus uh, 20 EM. Or, or rather 1k flat HP versus 80 EM or 100 EM. Uh, either one is fine. Okay? But if you really want higher HP, so as to make it easier for in terms of building the other characters, then yeah, you can definitely go this. But it's not like you can target your upgrades anyway. So <laughs> now the best thing about Sifos is that R1 of Sifos is actually sufficient. If you have at least 22.7 ER just from base rows and 925 EM on Nilo, including buffs. So you see what I'm trying to say here? What I'm trying to say here is that you don't even need to pull for R5 of Sifos. It's a new weapon for everyone. While you're pulling on Nilo's uh, weapon banner, let's say you're unlucky, your first 5-star weapon is not her signature weapon. And if you're not so unlucky that you did not even get an R1 Sifos before getting a 5-star weapon, then you can just use the R1 Sifos because the R1 Sifos with these stats were allow you to perform the same as a R5 Sifos. You don't need R5 Sifos. Although, 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 the team team EM obviously is lower, right? The team buff EM, and I'll talk about that later. Because Sifos also gives EM buffs to the team. Oh, sorry, not EM. ER buffs to the team. So I'll, I can tell you guys R1 Sifos is one typical tier behind R1 key. This is Sifos, right? So R1 Sifos is 19 to 20% behind a key of Kai Shinis 2. So it's about one ninety percent is very very standard or typical of a tier difference. And like I say, R M one and R five Sifos have the same damage figures because of what I've mentioned here. You you you, you don't actually get more, but R five does help you with one thing, which is the uh, E R reduction, the reducing the E R required on your teammates. But it's not that impactful at R one. It's about ten percent E E R buff to the whole team. The other three teammates, but at R5 it's okay, it's at 20% ER. So at 925 EM, you get 20% ER to the team at R5. That's what I'm trying to say here. Okay? 925 EM on the character that's equipping it. So yeah, Sifos, very good performance. It's the next best weapon after her signature weapon. On top of that, it also gives a team buff. It doesn't give team EM buff like the uh, signature weapon, but it does give ER, which still does help a little in the DPS. And you basically use the ER to translate into EM stats. So 20% is like what, 60 EM? 10% ER is like 40 EM on average anyway. So uh, it's okay, it's a decent, decent enough for a 4-star weapon really. Now let's talk about the Iron Sting. Iron Sting is a fully F2P craftable weapon. And its performance is actually very close to Sifos. It's only 3 to 4% behind. See this? At R5 versus R5, it's 3%. At R1 versus R1, it's uh, about 
Now, the in fact, I wouldn't recommend getting R1, R5 iron sting. You don't really need to because if you look at the difference, it's not that big, right? It's only like two to 300 DPS from R1 to R5. So you really don't need R5 iron sting for Nilo. If you have, obviously just give it to her, but you don't need. That's what I'm trying to say. Because remember, iron sting damage buff doesn't work for multiple cores. That's the reason why the R1 to R5 doesn't really make a difference for iron sting. So anyway, it's three to four percent, and when you go to two enemies, that gap gets in, in gets stretched further, so it's four uh, percent. Okay, and you'll notice that at C four, Cephos is slightly worse off, right? It's like zero point five to zero point seven, and one point one to even one point five, and it's very easy to understand this because C four negates the ER bonuses from Cephos. What does C four Nilo do? C four Nilo gives her energy, so that reduces the ER that you need, right? So in return, the ER bonus from Cephos aren't really being utilized. So that's the reason why Iron Sting actually overtakes Cephos. But it's only about average of 0.6% R1 and 1.1% R5. But to begin with, to begin with, I wouldn't recommend going beyond C2 anyway. C2 is a perfect place to stop for her body full cost. And with that being the case, then you know this doesn't apply, and Iron Sting is always 3 to 4% behind Cephos. Which is still a very very good performance for a fully F to P weapon. Okay. Uh, in terms of HP is 61k with the notes I mentioned earlier, Iron Sting on the other hand doesn't give you enough room. Iron Sting doesn't give you enough stats unlike the Cephos, where Cephos you can actually try to get more EM or even more flat HP. That's actually the main reason why the uh Cephos is better. Even after taking into account Iron Sting's damage bonus for her uh talent damage. Which, like I guess it's not a big portion. And uh, basically, Iron Sting at R1 is being slightly is slightly higher than one typical tier at 23%, but when you go C4, it's about one typical tier. So uh, more or less, it's just one typical tier. Slightly, slightly higher than one typical tier behind Signature Weapon. Uh, so it's actually pretty surprising because I actually, before I did this weapon comparison, I actually thought that She's only going to be good with her signature weapon. Like her signature weapon is going to make such a huge difference. But with Iron Sting and everyone at all of the bountiful cores being at 60k, 61k HP instead of like 70 plus k HP with her signature weapon, the damage fall off from Iron Sting is actually not too bad. It's not too bad. It's going at uh one typical tier behind R1 key. But to be fair. For Iron Steam, my EM is 825. So 825 EM, assuming you have 825 EM on all your characters, which if you remember my Nilo math guide, I already mentioned, right? 750 EM is a good minimum target for F2P players. If you stretch it a little, 800 is still okay, even without her signature weapon or allergy giving you the EM team buff. So it's definitely doable. Okay, it's doable. It's tougher without those buffs, yes, but it's doable. And this is for people who really, really hate the weapon banner. Do you think that the weapon banner is a scam? You never ever want to put on the weapon banner. You're very, very risk averse to it. Even with how good the weapon banner is this time, then just go for our our and thing. It's a player preference. I'm not going to say uh, that weapon banner is not a scam. It's more scammy than the character banner, but there are cases where weapon banner can be worth pulling on. Which uh, is when you have new 4 star weapons and 2 good 5 star weapons on it. Sounds familiar? <laughs> okay, anyway, let's move on to Sacrificial Sword. I just want to throw Sacrificial Sword in here in case I get other questions about ER weapons, weapons with ER substats. So I, I can tell you guys, Sacrificial here is simply a set stat stick for the ER, just for the ER stats. The effect is not being used here. Favonius has the exact same performance too because Favonius has the exact same stat sense for Sacrificial, at least for the swords. So if you want to use Sacrificial's effect to do Nilo on field with a tri Tranquility Aura on, I can tell you it's only feasible with Nahida Strong Dendro application. Otherwise, it's too much Hydro. But there are other issues with this, okay? One, because Sacrificial works, by the way. Sacrificial does allow you to be able to do Tranquility Aura first, followed by her on field. But... There are other issues. Number one, your rotation gets extended. 
right? Because Nahida, if you remember, Nahida takes up quite a fair bit of on-field time already due to her need to reapply her E. And then on top of that, you are doing Nilo on-field too. So uh, it can result in a little bit of a rotation extension. And if enemies die, you need to reapply Nahida E. And this this is the biggest uh this is the biggest issue by the way. The moment enemies die and you need to reapply Nahida E, your Nilo on-field stance will be cancelled prematurely. Because you have to switch to Nahida to apply the E. And your Nilo is gone. If you don't do that Nahida thingy, if you don't switch Nahida to apply the E, and you want to rely on the third the second dendro if you have one there, your second dendro cannot keep up with the amount of hydro that Nilo on field with plus tranquility aura plus your second hydro is dishing up. It can't. And given how much AoE damage multiple costs do, I can tell you the situation of having to reapply Nahida E is very likely. So in other words, I think you can get one to two more Nilo triggered multiple costs uh, using sacrificial source effect. But if I factor in the rotation, extension, etc., I think it may end up with similar or worse DPS. It's not that great. I think you're better off just doing Iron Sting and Syphos with a straightforward off-field rotation instead of one that varies based on situation. At least that, that is what I would recommend. Okay? Now, let's put aside the effects, okay? Let's look at only just the stats, the ER stats from these two weapons. They actually perform fairly decently. In fact, they are similar to PJC before C4. I'll show you guys. Uh, Alright, that's similar to PJC before C4. Before C3 for that matter, actually. C0, C1, C2. Yeah. Well, it's 0.2% here, so I guess C before C4 is still correct. Okay. So, can you imagine a R1 PJC performs the same as a sacrificial sword of a volume sword for Needle in a body full Qualcomm as a off you. So, yeah. But. Since R1 Iron Sting, which is a craftable weapon, performs better than Sacrificial slash Favonius and PJC, you should just go for R1 Iron Sting. Or even R1 Syphos if you don't mind pulling a weapon better and you want some bonus ER to teammates too. To be honest, there are many other characters that can make better use of Sacrificial slash Favonius instead of just using it as a stat stick, right? And in terms of HP, it's the same. It's 61k with the notes I mentioned earlier. So basically, all the 4-star weapons, you get 61k HP. But Syphos, you can get higher if you go, you can get higher because there's more room to get more flat HP upgrades. While PJC is uh, 64k and 67k, so it's higher than Syphos. But due to the lack of other bonuses from other contribution from PJC, it ends up being the worst weapon. So let's look at the conclusion. Actually, although I talk a little bit about the conclusion, but let's look at it now in terms of weapon rankings. So at C0, C3, I can tell you guys, ranking wise, Obviously, R5 signature weapon is the best, followed by the R1 signature weapon. Oh, but to be to be fair, it's not always this case. Sometimes the R5, uh, other R5 five star weapon may be better than the R1 signature weapon. But in this case, the signature weapon R1 is still better than R5 PJC. In fact, in fact, the R1 or R5 Syphos, which is the same anyway, at least for uh, Nilo. Is better than R5 Iron Sting, or even, uh, yeah, it's better than R5 Iron Sting, and R5 Iron Sting is actually better than R5 PJC, or more or less equal to. While R1 Iron Sting is slightly lower than PJC, or more or less equal to. Very, very close. So, this is how bad R5 PJC is, by the way. It is more or less equivalent to either R1 or R5 Iron Sting. That's R5 PJC for Nilo in Bountiful Qualcomm. Of you. And then you have uh, what's coming up next will be the R5 or R1 sacrificial slash Favonius outdoing or almost equivalent to a R1 PJC. And generally speaking, the gaps between the ranks above gets bigger when you have two plus enemies, but it's not big enough to make a difference to rankings. So I hope you guys can see from here, right? Please don't waste your PJC on Nilo. Okay? Don't waste your PJC on Nilo. If you are pulling for Nilo's weapon and you get a PJC, it's better served on other characters like Ke Qin or uh, Xing Chiu. Although Ke Qin now with uh, Aggravate, Beast Splitter is much better in comparison. But it still helps. It's still a good DPS weapon for a sword character. Okay? 
Uh, at C4+, plus, the weapons with uh, ER bonuses such as Syphos and uh, Sacrificial slash Fovonius, they fall off slightly in relative comparison, but I'm not going to do an updated ranking for C4+, plus because I don't recommend going beyond C2 to begin with. Also, the ranking changes are too small. The, the changes are too small. You wouldn't really affect my recommendation below. So what's my recommendation for Nilo in terms of weapon? If you don't intend to pull for her signature weapon, Awa Iron Sting is decent enough. If you don't mind trying for her signature weapon, especially given how good her weapon banner is, getting R1 Syphos is also better than R1 Anstine. Not just uh, the performance for Nilo, but also the fact that it gives EM bo ER boost to the rest of the team teammates too, which helps with their EM building. And remember, you need some EM on them, on the other characters. This helps. Now, if you do get her signature weapon, I'm going to say huge congrats to you, because the EM team buff from her signature weapon Plus the huge EM buff to Nilo itself is awesome. It makes building the EMT buff makes me building EM on your team much easier. And it also allows you to build more of the cost that, that they need. Like Kole. Kole actually obviously you should try to build uh crit stats as well. And not to mention the additional 10k HP you get with a signature weapon, right? A signature weapon is just really really good. So with how good her weapon banner is, yeah, I think it's it's a high it's a very good weapon to pull uh, banner to pull on. But obviously if you think that weapon banner is a scam, you hate the weapon banner, then just use our iron sting. Okay, I'm not gonna force anything on anyone. I'll talk more about her weapon banner in the next video. And that actually brings me to the end of this video. We have done all of this for Nilo. Okay. The next one is gonna be the constellation and refinement comparison. And since we already have the banner information, I can do one that uh, is, how should I put it, a, best, a more well-informed recommendation with the banner in mind. And I'll try to, I'll definitely be able to do it before Nilo is out. Okay. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope the video is helpful to you guys. Uh, if you like the content, invite video and click subscribe for more. Bye.